Open D tuning, what's it all about? This is going to be relevant whether you play in open D tuning, open E tuning, open C tuning, or any variation of the Vestapol tuning. So what we're talking about here is a tuning in this case, which is D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. So D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. The intervals are 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1. So 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1. And that's the same in open E tuning, open C tuning. It's just starting from a, a different route. So all of what we're going to talk about here is going to apply to those tunings as well. Um, the names of the notes and the names of the chords will change, of course, but the relationships are all the same. So this tuning um, has a couple of strings common to standard tuning. So the A and the D don't change, but everything else changes, which makes it tricky. So um, the two outside strings have been dropped down a tone. The second string has been dropped down a tone. The third string has been dropped down a semitone. Now what this gives us is some interesting stuff. We've got a pair of strings on A, so that's strings five and two. And we've got three strings that are D strings. So we've got the two outside ones like we would have in standard tuning, they'd be the same note. And we've got the open D as well. So this, Although initially this tuning is really confusing, things like that are very, very helpful to start to see little patterns and, and maps of things because something that you can do on the first string could be done on the, third, uh, on the fourth string or the sixth string. So we've got the same stuff laid out and, and that's incredibly helpful. Okay, so let's look at chords. So if we're playing in the key of D, Here's our one chord, just those open strings are just an open D major chord. Then, if we want to play the four chord, which is G, we're up at the fifth fret. And if we want to play the five chord, which is A, we're up at the seventh fret. Now I'm playing this with a slide, you can play it with your fingers. This is the same relationship in open C, open E, it's the same relationship in open G as well actually, but what we've got there, just to map out, we've got our D chord, our G chord, our A chord, and then we go back up to the 12th fret and we've got D again. So this is helpful because, you know, if we're playing a blues, for instance, and we want to know where 1, 4 and 5 are. everything lies out where everything lives just the one four and the five it you know that's the first step next let's look at triads um, for this I'll take the slide off you can do it with the slide as well but I'll, I'll just hopefully be able to make it clearer like this so what we're looking at I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on strings two three and four which are a really nice kind of place to work on these triads so if you play strings two three and four you've got a D triad so you've got your open D triad it's the root position triad, it's D, F sharp, A. If I move up to this position, now I've got a 
D triad, but it's the first inversion that has the third in the bass. So now what I'm playing is F sharp, A, and then D on the top. That's fourth fret, third fret, fifth fret on strings four, three, and two. So I've got open D. Got my first inversion. And then to play my next inversion, I'm up here. Okay, so I'm on uh, the seventh fret of string four, the eighth fret of string three, and the ninth fret of string two. And it's a second inversion triad. So it's A, D, F sharp. So I've got. And then my final one, uh, you know, a repetition of the open one is just to go up to the 12th fret. So I've got I can go back down. I could keep going higher, I could just repeat the same ones. And I run out of space there and then back down. So this is incredibly useful to map out to find out where these major triads are. do is then take it to four and five so you go okay well that was the one chord that was D what about the four chord so what about the G chord so I've got that here if I start with my lowest one that's the second inversion one it's like this shape that we had a second ago but just drop down to the open position um, and then we've got the root position one to the first one. Okay, so it's the same shapes, it's just starting from a, a different point and a different fret. And then you'd want to do the same for the five chord. So again, starting with the lowest one, you'd be here, which is our second inversion one. This is an A triad, uh, but it's got an E in the bass to the root position one, and we go up to the first inversion, and then we go up to the that same one again. So that way we've mapped out one, four, and five. And a great exercise um, which you can do, and um, full credit to Joey Landreth, um, for this one, uh, this is a, a, a really great exercise, um, is basically going up one of the triads, so go up the one, up the neck, and then go down the four, and then go up the five, and then down the one. So you're kind of just switching between them in different directions. So if I start with the one chord, which is here, and I play all the triads, all the inversions, and then from here, I'm gonna go up but I'm going to go to the four chord. And then from here, I'm going to go up, find the next one for the five chord. And then I'm going to go back to the one chord, I'm going to go up. So it has a nice kind of musical logic to it. So Again, what I'm doing is going up D, and then when I get to the 12th fret, I find the nearest um, 4 chord, which happens to be just going up there, and then down. And when I'm here, I'm going to find the nearest 5 chord, which is up again here. find the nearest one chord again which is going up. So that's a nice way of just mapping these triads out on those three strings and, and having a little exercise to work through them. And then the extension of that is then to apply what you've learnt um, to the other sets of strings. That's just on strings two, three and four. But these triads live on the um, other sets of strings, for instance on the top three strings. Again, you start with the open strings. Um, then you've got the uh, second inversion here. Then you've got the 
root position. Okay, that's just an example. I mean, you could extend that to four and five, and you can do it on strings three, four, and five, and four, five, and six. At some point, I might do a video on all of these options, but I think if you start on strings two, three, and four, you can get a long way, and then you can you know, map that out for yourself. And I think that the, the work done in mapping it out for yourself is, is all very valuable as well. Um, and just a quick bonus thing on this. Well, what if I wanted to play minor chords here? Ah, well, so what we need to do is we need to be aware when we're playing these shapes um, where the third is, because that's the note that will change. Now, I can't change the third here because it's the open string, but it, this shape here for the major triad there's the third, so if I want to play the minor triad, I just drop this note down a fret. Put the D underneath. Okay, that's a minor triad. In this shape here, the third is on the second string, so I need to drop that down. And again, I can put that reference. Um, and then for the, the root position one, the third is in the middle, it's on string three, so I need to drop that note down. So now my minor triads, they start here. That just, now you've got major triads and minor triads. With those two, you've, you've got a lot of the fretboard mapped out. And a final bonus tip, which again, I might extend later on in, in, a, in a future lesson, but you can also then look at these and go, oh, well, if I've, say I've got this chord here, it's a triad, if I want to play a seventh chord, how do I do that? Well, you can just look at that and add a seventh to it, so you could end up with this. That then becomes a D seventh chord. Um, simply by looking at the information under your fingers and going, well, I've got a triad. How would I make that into a seventh chord? Or if I've got a minor triad, I want to make that into a minor seventh. I could add that same note and maybe refinger it like that. So, you know, just from the triads, what I'm trying to suggest is you can build all your chords from that if you just kind of understand how those chords are constructed and add the notes. Um, but this, the triads just map out the whole thing for you, uh, which, which is a wonderful thing because what you're finding uh, already, I hope, or noticing is, um, you know, all these chord shapes are completely different from normal. Um, and it can be really confusing when the chords um, look the same. For instance, this is an augmented chord tuning but it looks like an open D chord and then it gets really confusing because um, you know you're trying to maintain these two separate worlds in, in your head um, so focus on the triads that exercise is wonderful try and do it with mi major triads you can do the same exercise with minor triads okay finally how do we apply this to some improvising like where do all the things lay out in this tuning so if I'm playing, say, in the key of D, maybe I'm playing a blues in the key of D, um, the way I think about it is just kind of understanding where these different intervals are um, and, and fragments of scale shapes and then kind of building up the whole map. So if you start on the first string, your major third is on the fourth fret and the minor, minor third is on the third fret. third and the major third, that's a really good place to know about. But you can do it on the fourth string as well. And also on the sixth string. Because they're all D strings, so that's the, that relationship's really important. So we've got the minor third here, the major third on the fourth fret. Then we've got on the next string the root and the flat seven. So scale or anything already you've got some 
something that's going to sound bluesy. This note here on the fifth fret is the same as the open string as well, so that's worth bearing in mind. And you can play the open string here. The open string is the fifth. So you've got five flat seven root. notes around with the open strings and around the third fret and the fourth fret if you want the major third. Um, then extending that further you've got um, the fifth here. The note that you don't want to use um, if you're playing in a, in a minor kind of tonality is this third string so you just because that's that's the major third there so if you're playing uh, the blues it's 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 fine but if you want that more minor sound you're gonna be on the fourth fret sorry on the fourth string at the third fret so again this this little the nice thing about this tuning, this pair of strings that we were just playing on, it's the same notes on strings five and four. So you can just map out these little shapes. And just visualize little shapes like that. Um, when you get onto the f fourth string, it's as I say, it's like the third, uh, like the first string. The third string, yeah, you've got the fifth here, it's the same as the open string. You've got the thirteenth or sixth at the fifth fret, but you've got the flat seven at the sixth fret. Most of it's just living around frets three and five with, as I say, you've got the major third on the fourth fret. Um, and on the third string, you've got the... You've got the sixth, fifth and third frets that you can use. So with all of that, I mean, if you're used to playing conventional guitar and you do like open position E minor pentatonic, you know, like the first shape of E minor pentatonic. That's kind of the equivalent here. You're really around the third and fifth frets with the open strings, but as I say, watch out for the third string because that's the major third if you want the minor sound. It lives on this third fret here. So, you know, putting all of this together, uh, standard tuning. This is going 4-1. Now, if we take this further, um, go up to the 12th fret, which is where the, the D chord lives again, and this time you got root and flat 7 on the 1st string, the 4th string, and the 6th string. So root and flat 7. Um, and then on strings 2 and 5, you've got the five, the flat five, and the four. So, so pretty much covered most things just between frets 12 and 10, and 12 and 10 again. So every string apart from the third string is the 12th fret and the 10th fret. And if you want the flat five, that bluesy note, um, you're going to be on the 11th fret. 
on string two or on string five. So, and then this time the minor third, we can access it on the third string by dropping down to the eleventh fret. So you can play the major third on the twelfth fret or the minor third on the eleventh fret. So your shape is really. One thing to watch out for is as you drop down from the 5th string to the 6th string, it doesn't quite follow in the same way that it does in standard tuning. There's a, there's a leap there where that's kind of what our ears are expecting from uh, standard tuning, so you just have to watch out for that. But basically if you're in D, These notes here are just we're in, we're in D, but it's those notes that are just like shape one of minor pentatonic, and these ones here like shape five. So that's on the top two strings. So you, you can extend it when you're up here, going up three frets. So you've got access. You know, basically those top two strings look the same. It's just it looks, it's kind of out by two frets. This looks like E minor pentatonic, but we're actually playing D minor pentatonic just because of the tuning, because the strings have been dropped down. So um, those shapes are, are included in the resources with this lesson, and um, it's just a case of messing around with them. But as I say, the pairs of strings are really useful to, to, to pay attention to, 5 and 4 and 2 and 1, and also the octaves, so the 1st string, 4th string, 6th string. Um, and, and you can just pick up, you know, short little licks. I'll, I'll play some stuff in a minute that you're more than welcome to, uh, you know, just work out little bits from, um, and just to get you started and give you a bit of vocabulary. Uh, and then from there, you know, it's, it's up to you to take it where you want to take it. So please like the video if you liked it. Um, put some comments in how you find this. Um, you know, have you been working in this tuning for a while? Have you got any tips? Have you got any questions? Are there more things I can help with? Um, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. <laughs>